Okay, so it's the 17th of November. It's um, just past 7.30. I'm going to do the FTSE review and then the subsequent trade opportunities later in the day. Um, I've actually, I've already made this video. Um, however, it didn't work, so I'm going to do it again. Basically, I'm using new recording software, new audio software. So hopefully it works this time. Okay, so... Looking at the FTSE, yesterday we had a very strong up day. We gapped down over the weekend and then we produced this enormous um, bullish candle. The market um, broke all the way through the gap and continued considerably higher. Now, this is the sort of the only time where I'll use Fibonacci. It's just for measuring um, pullbacks. It's the only, only reason I use it. I won't ever trade off of Fib levels. We can see the pullback is between 50 and 61.8%. So it's a prime area to look for some sort of a um, sell-off. On top of that, what we can also see is that we're into a very key area in the market. We're at R3, which is um, the pivot point, and also the key daily level of 6 to 55. Hopefully, um, everyone who took the trading course you got the updates on the Sunday with the new key daily levels. So you should have this on your on your um, charts. So yeah, we can see we've touched here with the tail. We've got lows of these candles here, the tail here. Um, we've pushed up and we've touched with the highs in here. We've got the tail and the highs of these candles. So it's, it's a relatively strong area. We can actually see in this morning's trading so far, the market has already reacted from this area. So I'm going to drop down to the five minute time frame. Um, something else to note today. There's quite a lot of um, important news releases coming out. We've, at 9.30 we've got the um, UK Consumer Price Index. Then at 10 a.m. we have the Eurozone Economic um, Sentiment Survey. And at 1.30 we have American News. I believe it's the Consumer Price Index. So... Um, that's three fairly high importance news releases. So I will be careful trading around these times. I won't enter in a, into a position, you know, sort of five, ten minutes before the release. And if I do happen to be in a position um, when those news releases come out, I will look to tighten my stops or bring it to break even preferably. I'll also have my window open so that I can manually close a position should the market jump against me very quickly okay so on the five minute time frame we can actually see we've already had a reaction from up in this area this morning um 6255 is the key daily level 6261 is the pivot point and i actually added this one in today 6235 and um, i analyzed the market a bit more and this this creates the zone for me so if the market can push up into here um, at the open, I will be looking for reversal signals for a sell position. The only way I would be interested in any sort of continuation trade would be if the market broke through into the 6 to 70 levels as a minimum. So say at 8 o'clock, if the, the candle broke through here, closed up here, could consider a continuation trade but would need to close above the 6270 levels just because of the very strong resistance that I've already showed you on the daily time frame and we've also got a level down here which is R2 which ties in with the the round number 6200 and the key daily level at 6195 down here this is actually where the market um, traded its highest yesterday so i mean the market only came up into the 6160 levels and then overnight trading we've pushed all the way up into the highest of 6250 basically so if the market can come down here and um, i would be watching it again for reversal signals and we've got another zone down here so it's going to be a case of watching the market I'm really hoping for some sort of bounce up into this area where I can take a reversal. It'll be, 
fairly confident it would be a nice trade. I wouldn't expect the market just to go crashing through this. However, as always with trading, you have to wait and you have to see what the market does and what it's telling you. We've already had a fall off, so I'm not even sure if it will push back up into here. Um, I'll watch it at 8 o'clock and then I will come back at 4.30, take you over the trade opportunities and also the trades that I took. Okay, so it is quarter to five. Um, the FTSE is now closed. So let's go over what happened today and the trading opportunities. So we opened right here at eight o'clock. First thing to note is we didn't get the strong push up at the open, where I would have been looking for an instant sell up here. And we didn't get the strong push up where it broke through and I would have been looking for a continuation trade. Instead, the market dropped down a little bit came into the key area and then pushed higher. It pushed straight up into the zone. Um, now, when it got up to this zone here that I'd already identified, um, it came right up into R3, the 6255 level. Um, and then we got this candle here. Now, this candle here is seller stepping into the market. However, it is also profit taking. After a day like yesterday where we've had a very strong update, and then after a move like this this morning where the market has rallied up with very little resistance, this is going to be a perfect place for people to take profits. Um, so once we got up here, the market ranged sideways, didn't really go anywhere. For the people who have taken the trading course, hopefully you could all spot that this move up here was running out of energy. Um... And you were looking for reversal signals after that. So we came up to R3. We got several reversal signals. We got one here, a piercing pattern. Another piercing pattern. Um, and also a pin bar right here. So numerous opportunities to step into the market. The market then pushes higher out of the zone. Rejects. This is a, a false break. So... Let me go over this. Um, a lot of beginner traders, when it comes, when the market comes up into this area, let's say you've entered after one of these candles. Now, the market falls down here and then it rejects. So a lot of people, especially beginners, are going to look at this and they are going to think that um, the market is turning against them. The market is going to continue its upward run. They'll either close out their position at break even, maybe, maybe for a small loss. The market then comes up, goes sideways, and pushes out even more people will exit up here there's also going to be a whole band of people who are looking for breakout trades who will enter into buy positions once this happens perhaps people who have been selling the market pushes up they panic they close it out and they enter into a buy position the market comes up and then reverses once again now where do you think a lot of sellers um, are going to have their stop it's going to be right above R3. It's a very typical place for stops to be. This false break is purely clearing out stops. It's just knocking out stops. Um, that is exactly what it's doing. There's no buyers up here. There's nobody wanting to step into the market. No, no big money wants to come in here. It pushes up, clears out these stops, and then turns around again. Now, for everyone who has taken the course, um, you all know exactly where your stops should be. So you should have been completely fine. The market then falls back down again and pushes up back into the zone. Now, we had three news releases today. We had um, one at 9.30, one at 10, and then we had the American one at 1.30, which was here. So the whole way through these news releases, the market has been unable to break out of this zone. It's made a false break and then returned. We then get a news release at 1.30, um, an American news release, it pushes up strongly, however it still can't get out of the zone. We're getting more sell signals in here. This is all building to your confidence that you can hold on to um, your sell position. And then what do we get? We get the sell off right here. Very nice sell off. Um, comes down relatively strongly. And um, what happens after that? Let's have a look. So this is it's actually quite important because I know a lot of traders, when you get price action like this, this is when you get chopped up. 
it's because you're not willing to hold on to your positions. It's because you start to doubt your trading plan. Um, you need to, first of all, you need to have a good trading plan, obviously, but then you need to follow your own rules. If you start altering your rules, um, panicking, um, you're going to have lots of losses. So even from back here, you hold on to these positions, you get the sell off. The market doesn't always react instantaneously. Um, it, it's a battle between buyers and sellers at all times. So there's a lot of noise in the market and things can take some time to complete. So the market then comes down, it pushes up again. And this time when it pushes up, where are we at? We're almost at four o'clock. So we push up, we get a break through the zone. It then comes down again. And the market actually closes after this candle right here. So this is after hours trading where it has broke through um, the zone. So the whole day during trading, it was unable to break through and maintain itself up here. So it was a very nice day. There was a few setups, um, all of them very nice. All of them worked very nicely. Let me just bring up my um, gain for today. Sorry, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to this because I'm now on the PC for making videos. I have been doing it on the MacBook. However, I need to move it over onto the PC in readiness for the trading room. So £487.50, that's UK sterling. Another very nice day. Um, it could have ended at break even. It could have ended at losses if I had not followed my plan, if I had not trusted my system. But of course I do. And that's how I ended the day, very nicely. Now, I want to add a couple of things quickly um, with regards to the trading room, especially. Um, I've already mentioned it's coming on the 1st of February 2016. Um, it's not going to be like an unlimited service. And what I mean by that is it's, it's not going to be open to an unlimited number of people. It, right now, what I'm thinking is maximum 25 to 30 people. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that 25 to 30 people in the room, I would quite like it to be a quite a social place as well, so um, everyone in the room can talk amongst each other. Because a lot of trading is sitting around just waiting, so it's good to have somewhere where you can talk to like-minded people. Um, it, it helps break up your day a little bit. Another reason for that is no doubt I'll be getting asked questions and I'll be talking to people above sort of 25 to 30 people. It can get a bit hectic, so I don't want to do that. The second reason is that I don't want to become one of those traders who claims to be a professional trader and they make the majority of their income from selling courses and from their live trading rooms. If I'm being honest, I find that slightly deplorable. I think you should always inform the people who are going to pay for your services that that is how you make the majority of your money if that is what you're going to do. I, I make most of my money, I am make the, the vast majority of my money through trading. It more than sustains me and that's exactly how I want to keep it. The other thing I wanted to touch on is that currently I get quite a lot of messages. Um, I reply to every message, I always will reply to every message. I'm getting about sort of 10 to 15 a day right now. So when the trading room starts, replies to these messages are going to be delayed. It's purely because my full focus is going to be on the trading room. And the people in the trading room are going to get the vast majority of my attention. Um, it's, a paid it's a paid subscription service. It's a paid room. So that's how it's going to be. I will reply to all messages, but it just it might take me slightly longer. Okay, so I think that was everything. So as always, guys, thank you for watching the videos. If you are learning how to trade, please do subscribe to Decisive Trading. It is completely free, and I try and post up at least a couple of videos per week. I'm also going to leave the address for the training site on the video. It saves people emailing me. So I'll leave the address, it's decisivetrading.usefedora.com. You can pop over there, it's got all the details of the trading course. Um, and only then, if you need more information, you can, of course, contact me. Okay, I'm James Orr, and thank you.